Let me start by saying I am not a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Today we are going to make something that I'm super excited about, quesa tacos. I have been wanting to make these since I saw Chrissy Teigen take a bite out of one on her Instagram story and it was so crunchy and so cheesy. It looked so good and it's finally coming to fruition. So let's get started. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is make a chili paste. So we are going to use three different peppers. I have ancho chilies, guajillo chilies, and pasilla chilies. I am going to use three guajillo chilies, one pasilla, and one ancho chili. What we've got to do first is take the stems and seeds off of these babies, otherwise it will be way too spicy. It's like what? <laughs> Pot of water boiling on the stove right now because what I'm going to do with these dried chilies is throw them in the water and let them simmer with the cover on for about 20 minutes to soften them up and pull out some of their flavor. Seeds on the floor, beans might die. You gonna die, beans? Come over here. Where'd you go? You went to pee, didn't you? You son of a bitch. PSA, buy this cutting board. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored by anyone. Cutboard pro. <laughs> the namesake. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you do not rub your eyes, touch your skin, or anybody else. Because it will burn. These babies are spicy. If you want, you can use gloves. Oops, something's sticky in there. <laughs> if you want, you can use gloves, but I don't have any besides my dishwashing gloves. So I'm just gonna risk it all today for you guys. Wow, the insides of these are nice and sticky. So she said. <laughs> Somebody get me a beer. Alrighty, so these are all de-seeded, all ready to go. So what I'm going to do is place them in that pot of boiling water. Now as soon as I get them in there, I am going to stir, and then I'm gonna shut off the heat, put the cover on, let them sit for 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, while these babies are simmering, sorry about their dog, I am going to brown my meat. <laughs> okay, so I realized that wasn't the best way to put it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to sear the short ribs. <laughs> So guys, funny story. The meat that you're about to see getting seared, I went to cook it and realized I never bought the meat. So, quick run to the grocery store. We got it. We're all set. Let's get back to cooking. Okay guys, so the base of this whole recipe is a slow cooked beef stew that we call Beeria. Beeria. <laughs> I'm sure there's a right way to pronounce that. I can't do it. So we're gonna call it birria. And for that, we are using about three pounds of beef. I am doing a little bit of a blend here. I have just a little over a pound of bone-in short ribs. And then I have slightly over two pounds of a boneless chuck roast. I'm going to do, I'm just gonna season these guys with a little bit of salt and pepper. Not too much because they're going to get a lot of flavor in the slow cooker. And then cut this big guy in half here just to make the cooking process a little bit easier and the searing a little bit better. And in the meantime, I am going to get my pan preheated super hot. Sorry, I'm so bad at this. Sorry about the squeaky. 
I have a squeaky toy obsessed dog, the namesake of this whole thing, my little bean. And he is being a very busy bean right now, squeaking away. So don't mind the little sound. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's your squeaky? Where's your squeaky? Is it under the couch? Of course it is under the couch. Uh, oh, I found it. Ha. Alrighty, so I have this pan here preheating over medium high heat and once it gets screaming hot, I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil. We like to use good olive oil. This is Portuguese. My fiance is from Portugal and this is one of his favorites. Um, so Portugal is from Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> My fiance is not from Portugal. He is from Brazil. <laughs> He's Portuguese. <laughs> it's Portuguese. So this fan is screaming out and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this on it. And I am going to immediately add the meat. Now all I'm going to do here is just about a minute on each side because this is going to fully cook in the crock pot. I just want it to get a little bit brown. Alrighty, I'm gonna flip this. And while these are cooking on this side, I am just gonna hop over and dice up an onion and get some garlic ready. Alrighty, so all you need is one small onion. Um, I have a half here, so I'm gonna use it. And then I will use half of another. Now just roughly slice these. Doesn't have to be pretty, it's all getting thrown into a crock pot. And then I have a little bit of a hack for you. For the garlic, what we do is we buy the fresh whole peeled garlic in the bag from the produce department at our local grocery store. It comes with about 60 cloves of garlic. We throw the whole thing into the food processor and then I store it in the freezer so when I need to cook with garlic, it is just ready to go. So super simple and it's like a half a tablespoon per clove of garlic. But there can never be too much garlic, so use what you like. What's beeping? The pepper. I think so. Alrighty, the onions are all set. I am gonna head back over to the stove to check on the beef. Looks good on that side, so I'm just gonna flip it to a third side, which will be good for the whole thing. And do that just for one more minute. Now my peppers are all set here. Oh, it smells so good. Spicy. Now what I'm going to do, oh, <laughs> hello, <laughs> get myself a setting tool, come on, no, this is not, okay, well he's old, alright, I'm going to shut the heat off on those, because they are all seared, sorry, I don't even hear that anymore, and then I'm going to take these peppers, that I have softened up super nicely. And I'm going to put them into a blender or a processor. This is a ninja here. We love this little guy. Not sponsored, unfortunately. I'm gonna add about a cup of water. And blend this baby up into a full paste. Sorry if this seems a little all over the place and a little flustered. I am just trying to have some fun. I do not typically do this, um, but the detailed recipe and step-by-step -step instructions will be down in the bottom of the description and also on my blog and my Instagram. Oh man, that smells good. Alrighty, back to the beef. Look at that brown. Alright, I'm gonna take these out of the pan. Oh, that got nice and good. Putting them right back on that same cutting board. Don't at me. They're still gonna cook. And 
these are gonna go straight into my slow cooker. You're gonna need a slow cooker that's at least 4.5 quarts. Let's throw these babies in. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a fine mesh sieve and I am going to strain this. This way any forgotten seeds or chunks of pepper won't be in there. You don't have to do this if you like that extra spice. But my fiance over here thinks mild sauce is hot. So we're gonna do this today. Um, I on the other hand am all about the spice. You know what? We're gonna make it spicy for him. <laughs> Skipping the stuff. Sorry, Luch. Just kidding. This is supposed to be a little bit spicy, so it'll be okay. Alrighty. So in my crock pot, I have the three pounds of beef. I have the chili paste that we just made. I'm gonna add oh, that dog. Man, it's gonna be the death of me. Anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna add the onion that we just diced up, roughly chopped, and I'm going to add my garlic. Now I'm just estimating here because I love garlic, so if there's extra, I will not be mad about it, but you can use about five tablespoons, which is a little over six cloves. I don't think that's right. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> it's like 10 cloves. I like garlic. You know what, don't listen to me. Tons of garlic in there, and now I'm gonna grab my seasonings. I need salt, cinnamon, pepper, oregano, thyme, bay leaves. And clove, yeah. I forgot clove. Some things I forgot to mention. Beef, bouillon, black up the goya name. My life is not typically this much of a mess. The whole <laughs> thing is just a giant joke. <laughs> I think I should have my own cooking show. Anyways, two teaspoons of salt, a couple dashes of pepper. Don't need much of this because we already got a lot of pepper in there. A literal dash of cinnamon. Same with the clove. These are super, super strong flavors, so you don't need much. And then I need a heaping teaspoon of oregano. The same with thyme. <laughs> that was so anticlimactic. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. Nothing. Two bay leaves are going in. That's not a bay leaf. And then, so you can use powdered beef bouillon, which is what I prefer. I think it gives it a little extra flavor. Or instead of the water that I'm about to add, you can use beef broth. What we need is about two tablespoons of this. Again, once this is all ready, you can taste the broth and go back in and um, add some extra seasoning, salt, pepper, bouillon. I prefer to add a little bit less right off the bat because you can always add seasoning, but you can't take it out. And then I am going to add about a quart or four cups of water. Alrighty, so four cups of water in there. We are going to turn this guy on high, covered uh, for four to six hours. If you're pressed for time, hopefully you're not, you can do the four hours, but we want this meat to be as tender as possible. So I like to leave it for the full six hours um, that it should be falling off the bone. Super easy to chop up. Once this is all done, and this is the most important part of this whole recipe because this is going to be the meat that goes in the tacos, but it's also going to be what we, the fat that we use to cook the corn tortillas in, which makes them nice and super crispy. And it's also going to be a dipping sauce for the tacos. That's going to be to die for. Don't be like me and forget ingredients. Chili in adobo, two 
to my um, mixture that I blended up. So I am going to blend that separately. These do not have to be boiled in water. Um, I'm just gonna blend this up real quick right now and throw it into the crock pot and give it a mix um, so we don't miss that flavor. Okay, so this is on high. That's it, I'll see you in six hours. While that's cooking, I will prepare all of the rest of the sides, which is cheese, guacamole, etc. The perfect avocado. There was nothing more satisfying than cutting it to a nice ripe avocado. Okay, now for my guacamole, I am going to add avocado, a little bit of onion, and the juice from half a lime. A little bit of pepper, and my pro tip is to add a little drizzle of olive oil. Avocados are already fatty, but that little bit of oil just makes the texture so creamy and adds even a little bit of flavor. Uh, typically, I would like to put cilantro in here, but it's one of those other things that I forgot at the store. Just keep mashing, mashing, mashing. <laughs> Alrighty, we are going to make some homemade salsa. So this is an optional step. You do not have to have this. You can buy store-bought salsa, or you can just skip the salsa altogether. But it is super easy to make. So I am gonna walk you through it now. I am just taking a small portion of red onion. You can use white onion if that's what you have. And I am just gonna chop this up roughly. It's going into the food processor, so nothing has to be pretty. Just dice it up a little bit. Now I have the um, same ninja that I used earlier. It's not even clean, because I'm gonna be adding very similar ingredients right into it. Just gonna throw this in there. I'm gonna add one, um, probably about a tablespoon of garlic, maybe even a little bit less. You don't need too much. A couple splashes of salt. One, uh, <laughs> there goes beans again. Surprise, surprise. Barking away. Um, sorry about him. Beans! Okay, back to the task at hand. Uh, these are the chili, the chipotle <laughs> and adobo beans. It's like having a kid, I swear. Um, these are the chipotles and adobo that I late added to the, um, the crock pot and also cannot get out of here. These are pretty spicy, so you can add these based on your preference. I'm only going to use two. Then I am going to dice up a tomato. I do not eat tomatoes, so I don't really even know how to cut a tomato. And then the last ingredient that we're going to use, if you are making this, you need to reserve that water that um, the peppers from the, the guajillo, pasilla, and ancho chilies uh, steeped in. That water, instead of regular water, is going to add a little extra spice and a lot more flavor to the salsa. a cup. This is going to be a pretty thin salsa. And then we are just going to blend this up until it's mostly smooth. A little bit of chunk is okay. If you like your salsa extra chunky, you can leave it extra chunky. Okay, now this may seem unusual, but what I'm going to do next is throw this in the pan. In the same pan that the beef seared in. I am going to throw this in here. Man, that looks good. I have the heat on medium high and I'm going to give this a little stir. I'm just going to bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Then it will be uh, stored, sealed in the fridge until we're ready to use it. And it's as simple as that. Guys, I am obsessed with this salsa. I will be surprised if there's any left when it, it's time for tacos. We are back. It has been about three hours. The house smells absolutely divine. Holy cow. I am going to... 
to give this baby a stir. Mix it up. this recipe it is Oaxaca cheese which is a traditional Mexican cheese it's like a string cheese kind of like a Mexican mozzarella and mozzarella is my favorite cheese actually this is the first time I'm trying this and I'm super super excited as I struggle to get it out of the package I'm gonna grate this pretty finely because it's gonna melt so beautifully on my tacos and make the whole reason why we call it a quesa taco, so we're basically making a quesadilla out of the taco. Let's see how this grates. Oh my god, so nicely. Here, try it. Tastes like. Oh my god, it's so good. It's string cheese. Salty string cheese. Why well, I've never had this before. I'm not sure. Oh my god, it's so good. I feel like the best cheese I ever had. This one specifically is very salty. I like it. Does Bean Bean like Oaxaca? Oh, <laughs> I almost took my finger off. He loves it. Hey. Oh, <laughs> I have no more. Hey guys, we are back. What I am doing here is I'm scooping, using a ladle to scoop some of the fat off of the surface of this broth. And we are going to use that fat to coat the tortilla, which is gonna fry the tortilla, which makes it nice and crispy. So this part is very important. And there is quite a bit of fat on here, but don't be concerned if you get some of that broth in there too. That is so okay. As you can see, I'm getting quite a bit of broth. And I am just going to do this until I have, till this bowl is about halfway full. Uh, we are gonna make a decent amount of tacos, so I need a decent amount of fat. Alrighty, I'm gonna grab the meat from the crock pot. I'm gonna grab the meat from the crock pot. Yum! This meat is so tender. I'm gonna take it off the bone, which is absolutely no work. Comes right out. Again, this cutting board, amazing. And now what I'm going to do is just take my knife and roughly chop this up. Oh my God, I can't wait to eat this. I gotta have a bite. Of the meat out because we're super hungry and I know we're gonna want to really stuff these tacos. Oh, it's taco time. Which was Tuesday? Well, we're tacoing on the Friday. This Oaxaca cheese that we already cut up. Of course, my beef. I have the fat here that I'm going to dip my tortillas into. And then I have the guacamole and the salsa that we made earlier. I have a couple of lime wedges and then I have some diced green onion. And I also have these, which we love in this house. It's pickled red onions. Um, we make these all the time and we go through them like crazy. I will post that recipe up on my Instagram. You can go follow me there. I will do that at some point this week. Um, this is the perfect addition to these tacos. It's like a nice vinegary freshness and it is just so good. Okay, so this roll is super, super hot. I have it preheated to about 350 um, and it's been going for a while. 
we are gonna dip this into the fat and I'm gonna try to keep it on the top most of this as possible because all the fat um, comes to the top and what's the actual broth is at the bottom. And then that baby is just gonna go on the flat top. Listen to that sizzle. Oh, I'm so excited. What I am gonna do is add a heaping mound of this Oaxaca on each taco. Oh, that looks and smells. I wish I could send you this smell. I'm gonna let that get nice and melty. And then what I'm going to do is add a nice scoop of this meat right to the middle. Now, you can never have enough cheese, so what we're gonna do is just add a little bit more. It's okay if you get some on the griddle. It actually is so good. It makes like a nice crispy um, cheese crust. And this is gonna be the perfect way to seal in the meat to the taco. So while these cook here, I'm going to grab a couple paper plates here. Now we are not doing anything fancy for the plating. This is traditional street food. But we are doing this as if we were in LA at the Taco E Bedia food truck, which is where I got this inspiration from. They are starting to crisp up, so I am going to squish them over. Holy cow. Alrighty, we are flipping these babies over. I am taking these babies off and going to give it a try. Oh, that looks so perfect. You can never have some cheese. Holy cow. Those look absolutely delightful. Time for my first experimental bite. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it good? Oh man. Let me see that taco. Mm. Hold on, Casey. You ready? Yeah. It's a little hot still. Oh, it's hot. Oh. <laughs> Bing, dinner. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy hell. Ah! I'm dropping everywhere. That was so good. Oh so freaking good. Amazing. Say something. Hi guys. I should have introduced what we were making in the beginning. I didn't even say we were making tacos. Yeah, you never said birria tacos. You're such an <laughs> idiot. <laughs>